Louis Nixon. Um, I'm an artist originally from London, and I moved to Hong Kong in 2018, in January 2018. I think, you know, I felt it was time to sort of stop that because I wanted to focus on my own work rather than curating projects for other artists. And also, I would make a specific work for a site and then the exhibition would be over and then I wouldn't have any work. All I would have is the photograph of the work. So I wanted to sort of develop a studio-based practice, um, you know, because I'd never had one. And so I moved into my studio in Hackney and then that's where I started to sort of, you know, develop my own work uh, separate from space explorations. So I've always been interested in landscape um, and actually sort of political nature of landscape. I've done a lot of work with sort of borders, made films of mountains and borders and sort of geographical boundaries and territories. Um, and I've also made quite a lot of kinetic works. Um, and so that relationship between movement and landscape and how borders move landscapes around interests me, but also, um, I guess, rocks are primitive objects, you know, and I think going back to my earlier, my art education as a painter and a sculptor, I've always been interested in the surface of objects and the form of objects, and so I'm drawn to rocks by their sort of visual look, their appearance, and also by their shape and sort of form and matter, and also what they represent. And I think in terms of um, time, you know, rocks embody sort of cosmic time. They're some of the earliest things in the universe, and also geological time, um, and how they evolve and change over time really interests me. So I think really the, the idea of the rock it's something I'm kind of analysing through film, through painting and through sculpture and finding out more about them. I mean, some of the paintings here are of rocks that I've collected, rocks that I've seen, rocks that I can't see ever. Like this is a, a rock from the surface of Mars. This is a rock from the moon. This is a meteorite. So, you know, the different ways in which rocks appear throughout the universe and, you know, in front of you as well is, is another kind of issue, how you encounter uh, this, th these objects. Um, and I guess for the big film work I'm showing um, at 1A Space, which is called Falling Rock, um, I spent quite a lot of time in Chile in South America and, and you know, witnessed, well, I was in, earth, in, a, in an earthquake and for the first time I sort of felt, you know, the fluidity of rocks and also, you know, rocks falling on mountains. And so the, the falling rock is this idea that, you know, a rock can kind of enter your life in a very unexpected uh, way. And I guess without saying too much about that, you know, how I represent that idea of, you know, encountering a rock in a very sort of active sense and, that, and what that might mean. Um, is represented in that film. So yes, yeah, so, um, you know, rocks for me are a way of exploring ideas of painting, ideas of sculpture, um, and encounters with materials, encounters with objects. And also, I think, journey and traveling, you know, and how as one walks around, you, you notice and see and experience different things. And rocks also signify characteristics about place. So, um, yeah, I find them fascinating. <laughs> I think, yeah, maybe two, actually, in relation to this body of work. Um, I did an exhibition in Armenia um, in 2006 which was a Biennale and um, there'd been a huge earthquake, you know, catastrophic earthquake in this space. 
and um, the Biennale was a way of sort of getting people back into the um, back into the the city. And I made a film about a mountain, Mount Ararat, which is the symbol of Armenia. You know, it's a very symbolic mountain. It's the sort of national symbol. And it's where Noah's Ark, you know, is famously supposed to be. And so um, Turkey redrew the border between Armenia and Turkey, and they moved the mountain into Turkey. So this sort of symbol of this country becomes geographically part of somewhere else. And I made this sort of film driving round the base of the mountain from the Armenian side. And I think that was, you know, a lot of this work is about a kind of spatial um, encounter with objects. But also I found out when, when I was there that Armenia is known as the land of rocks. And I drove off to some very um, interesting places where we found sort of rocks that were full of iron that you could sort of hit and they, they made sounds. So that was the first thing where I became interested in like this idea of rock in the, embodied in a mountain and then this sort of, you know, the macro and the micro and looking at a rock and the sound it can make and different sort of characteristics of rock. So that was a very informative time thinking back um, in terms of this body of work and the other one as I said was in Chile uh, with this earthquake and being in an earthquake and also you know being in a car with rocks falling down uh, on, off a mountain and that sort of fear of how, how rocks can sort of change your life so I think those two experiences certainly shaped this body of work. The, the large rock um, that I made in London, which is represented through this film, is a kinetic rock. You know, it's a moving rock. Um, and the idea of, you know, large ob objects moving, I think comes from those experiences, those two locations. You know, the first thing I did was I recreated a rock myself and built that from, you know, literally started, and I think it will be included in the film at 1A Space, from a pile of sticks, covering it with papier-mâché, covering it with chicken wire, building it up and making it bigger, and eventually, um, you know, making a kind of solid skin. And I guess, as I was making that, I was trying to recreate a, a solid object, but actually what I was doing was making a painted surface, because the surface had to look like a rock. So that then made me think, um, I should paint these things, you know, not necessarily make them. And when I was making the rock, you know, in, in London, I did get sort of stuck underneath it at uh, one time as well, trapped inside it. So I kept thinking about the inside and the outside of this object, so the surface and the volume. And so I wanted to explore rock through through those two mediums, you know, painting and sculpture. Um, it took me a long time, I mean, as a painter, I mean, I don't consider myself as a painter, I consider myself, I guess, as a sculptor. And I think these are more like drawings than paintings. And what I'm trying to do through the painting is not recreate the rock as an image, but understand the rock better through a sort of drawing process. So um, I think, you know, in a way for me, the paintings are sort of, you know, visual investigations into the subject matter, rather than sort of paintings for their own end. You know, going back to my interest in rocks and this idea of them sort of like falling through space, um, landing on a surface, the weight, sort of density, and their, their action, you know, film, only film can really capture that. So, you know, it was very natural for me just to use these different mediums and these different approaches. I mean, I, I then think it's important, you know, that Beyond Matter, which is the title of the exhibition, is about how you can represent the idea of a rock without having a rock. So in the absence of any rock, how can you like, experience the rockness of a rock? So, um, you know, painting on its own or film on its own or sculpture on its own um, didn't seem sufficient. And a kind of combination of this uh, through this idea of 
floating rocks, falling rocks and moving rocks. You know, it seemed to be a kind of natural uh, way for me to sort of ask the questions that I was trying to ask. 